Here's a problem concerning changing the order of integration for triple integrals. So let's suppose we're handed this integral here, and we see that the order of integration is dz dy dx, so z first, then y, then x, and we have some bounds on the integration there, and we want to change the order of integration to dy dx dz. Now it's not as simple as just uh, swapping symbols around. We have to actually visualize uh, what solid these bounds on the integration are describing. And then we have to try to re-describe that solid in the appropriate way. So our first job is to try to sketch the solid. So let's read off what the integral is telling us. Z goes from 0 to 1 minus y, y goes from root x to 1, and x goes from 0 to 1. I just want to note something here. This may seem really simple if you've practiced things like this, but it's a good check just to see if our descriptions actually make some sense. So the upper and lower bounds on the first thing we're integrating with respect to can depend on the other two variables, in this case x and y. The next variable that we're integrating with respect to, in this case y, the upper and lower bounds can depend on x, but not z. We've already described z, we will have done the integration with respect to z, so there can't be any z's kicking around in the description for y. And finally, the description for x, the upper and lower bounds, can't depend on any variables, y or z, so they're numbers. Better yet, let's say constants. Okay, now let's start by sketching the region in the xy plane. So described by these two inequalities here. So we're told that y can be as big as 1, so let's draw in the line y equals 1. And we're also told that y can be as small as root x. So let's sketch in that curve, y equals root x. And we're told that y sits between those two. It's bigger than root x, but smaller than 1. And we're told that x goes between 0 and 1, and when x is 1, that's when the two curves meet. So what we have is this region here, I'll shade it in in yellow. Uh, that's the region in the xy plane. Let me draw it here in 3 space. Sketch this in, there it is in orange, and we'll fill it in in yellow. Okay, now our job is to uh, sketch the upper and lower bounds for z. So we're told that z can be as small as 0, that's just the xy plane, that's no big deal. So the bottom of the solid will just be those orange curves there in the xy plane. And then the upper uh, bound for z is 1 minus y. Now we can draw in the line z equals 1 minus y, there it is, it crosses the axes at 1. And, but this describes a surface because it's in 3 space, and we get the surface by just stretching that out along the x-axis. The equation z equals 1 minus y doesn't depend on x, so x can be anything. So there's the plane, z equals 1 minus y. And we now have to figure out what's the solid. So let's sketch them in in red here, the boundaries of the solid. We have these lines here, and then finally we have this curved line on the top there. So what you have is kind of like a, a curved, a parabolic wall here, and then a, a flat roof there, and that's a good description of the solid. So since we're integrating with respect to z first, as the integral is handed to us, uh, we can visualize this. We can visualize little chunks of volume, dv, uh, oriented along the z-axis, and uh, those chunks of volume can be in, you know, different places in that region in the xy plane. Let me overlay here a, uh, a picture of this solid drawn in maple here. There it is. Now as the integral is given, we're integrating over the xy plane. So let me orient this, and now I'll just flip it around so that the y-axis is indeed pointing up. That's the region of the uh, in the xy plane that the solid defines. And you can see it's the same as that uh, highlighted region in yellow on the left there. Okay. But now what we want to do is change the order of integration to dy dx dz. So y comes first. And the way to visualize that is to say, well, if y comes first, now you can picture the, the solid as consisting of little chunks of volume oriented along the y-axis. So dv would be sitting there. And 
y then is going to range between uh, a couple of things. It's going to range between that curved wall, which is described by y equals root x, and uh, y can be as big as uh, this plane at the top, which has equation z equals 1 minus y. But we want to describe that plane, z equals 1 minus y, in terms of y. So let's just solve that for y, and we'll get y equals 1 minus z. Now this is true over some region in the xz plane, and our job now is to figure out what that region in the xz plane is. It's the shadow of the solid in the xz plane, so let's sketch in the solid, the shadow there. Now again, let me overlay the maple picture here, and let me rotate the solid around to see what the projection of this thing looks like in the xz plane. Let's do it carefully here. Ah, there we go. It looks like that. Now, our job is to describe that region in the x head plane uh, in a very detailed way. By the way, in a separate exercise, you could also change the order of integration so they integrate with respect to x first. And in that case, you'd be interested in describing this, uh, the region in the yz plane, which is sitting there. It's a triangle. But that would be a separate exercise. Now, back to the task at hand, which is to describe the region in the xz plane. Let me draw the xz plane with the x-axis pointing leftward. You'll have these two blue lines here. They'll form uh, boundaries of the region in the x xz plane. And then you'll also have this curve. Now, if you don't know that it's a curve, that's okay. We'll see how to determine that it's a curve. And there you see you have this, this shadow of that curve in red uh, projected onto the xz plane there. So to determine what that blue curve is, all we need to do is just intersect the surface z equals 1 minus y, that slanted plane, and the surface y equals root x, that parabolic wall there. And when we do that, if we say y equals root x and z equals 1 minus y, then we just get the equation z equals 1 minus root x. So that's the equation of the curve. Now, because we're going to integrate with respect to x after we integrate with respect to y, the order we're after is dy, dx, dz, we want to now uh, describe this equation in terms of x. So let's just rearrange and solve for x in terms of z. And I'm going to write it as x equals z minus 1 squared. It's a little easier to graph that way. It's clear that then it's just a parabola opening up along the x-axis that's shifted along the positive x-axis by 1. Okay. So, but of course, x equals 1 minus z, all squared. This is exactly the same description of that curve. I mention this only because it'll factor into some calculations we're going to do a little later on that I've included just to illustrate how sometimes uh, we have to be careful about the way we describe things. Okay, so x goes between 0 and z minus 1 squared. So that's one aspect of the description of the region. And of course, z can then go between 0 and 1. So as we already observed, over this region in the xz plane, y can go between root x and 1 minus z. So let's just copy those down again there. We have y between root x and 1 minus z, x between 0 and z minus 1 squared, z between 0 and 1. And this is our new description of the solid. Let's just do this check. We see that the upper and lower bounds for y can depend on x and z, and they do. The upper and lower bounds for x can only depend on z. They can't depend on y, and indeed that's the case here. And the upper and lower bounds for z, our last variable of integration, can't depend on any variables. They have to be constants. And that's the case, so that's good. Now that's just a little check to make sure that, that what we're claiming is a description of the solid does indeed make sense. Okay, so then the claim is that the triple integral that we're handed, this one, is equal to this. So these are our bounds on the integration. And the order is dy, dx, dz. Now, if we're really confident in, in our work, and we should be here, we've done it very carefully, then we can just leave it at that. But if we're curious, we may want to just check this out. So let's do the calculations. Let me circle that one in blue, and then I'll draw a blue line in the margin here. And we'll actually carry out the integration here. 
So we're integrating the function 1. The function we're integrating is just 1. And the antiderivative of 1 with respect to z is just z. And z goes from 0 to 1 minus y. Okay. So what we wind up integrating is 1 minus y minus 0. So 1 minus y. Uh, we integrate that with respect to y next. Antiderivative is y minus y squared over 2, and y goes from root x to 1. And we integrate this with respect to x. So let's first plug in y equal to 1, and then subtract off y equal to root x, so you get root x squared over 2, but of course root x squared just simplifies to x, and then you can simplify this a little bit more, you get this. And now we integrate with respect to x. There are your antiderivatives. You evaluate, evaluate them at the points, and you get 1 12th. Now, very good. Let's do the next one. So let's uh, circle this in purple here, and then I'll draw, uh, copy it there, draw a purple line. So let's do the integration here. But first, we integrate with respect to y. And the function we're integrating is 1, so the antiderivative of 1 with respect to y is just y y ranges from root x to 1 minus z. So we get 1 minus z minus root x. And then we have to integrate with respect to x and z. Okay. So the antiderivative of 1 minus z minus root x with respect to x is x minus zx minus 2 thirds x to the 3 over 2. And x goes from 0 to z minus 1 squared. Okay. Now, if we're not careful, Here's how simple mistakes can get made, and we may not even notice it. So let's just do this. I'm going to write it in red. Uh, the, what I'm about to write here will turn out to be wrong, and we'll have a little discussion. So let's just plug in z minus 1 squared for x there. Okay. <clears throat> Look at that last term. Minus 2 thirds z minus 1 squared to the power of 3 over 2. So maybe you say, well, by the law of exponents, I can write something squared then to the power of 3 over 2 is just raised to the power of 2 times 3 over 2. The 2's cancel, and you're just left with an exponent of 3. Looks okay. So away you go. Uh, you notice that you can factor out a z minus 1 squared. So you do that, and then you set about simplifying here. You get 5 thirds minus 5 thirds z. Okay. Carry out the integration. Now at this point, you've got 5 thirds z minus 1 squared times 1 minus z, and because, of course, z minus 1 squared is the same as 1 minus z squared, then this just simplifies to 1 minus z cubed. Find the antiderivative. It's minus 5 over 12 times 1 minus z, all to the power of 4. Evaluate at z and at 0 and 1, and you get 5 twelfths. What went wrong? With the other uh, integral, we got 1 twelfths, and this integral has got to give us the same number. So what went wrong? Well, it's this step here. Here's a seemingly trivial point. When we write root x, we mean the positive square root, because uh, y is between the positive square root of x and 1. And if we take the antiderivative of that, we get x to the power of 3 over 2 uh, times 3 over 2. There's a little typo there. If x is positive, uh, the solid is, is along the positive x-axis, and we take the positive square root of x, the antiderivative is going to be a positive number. Now, let's take x equal to z minus 1 squared. Let's take x to the power of 3 over 2. So we'll have z minus 1 squared to the power of 3 over 2. Now, if we do this carefully, you can either take uh, 3 times 2, to get z minus 1 to the power of 6, and then to the power of 1 half, which means you take plus or minus the square root. That simplifies to plus or minus z minus 1 cubed. Or you can do it this way. It amounts to exactly the same thing. You can take plus or minus z minus 1 squared and raise that to the power of 3, which then becomes plus or minus z minus 1 to the power of 3. Again, plus or minus z minus 1 cubed. Now here's the thing. Since z goes between 0 and 1, z minus 1 is negative. But we need 3 halves times x to the power of 2 over 3 to be a positive number when x is z minus 1 squared. So in order to, take, to choose the positive one of these, we have to take the negative. Negative z minus 1 cubed will give a positive number. And if you're not convinced, you just take, hey, z equal to a half and just plug it in. 
then a half minus 1 is negative a half. You take the cube of that, it's negative 1 eighth. So you take the negative of that and you get plus 1 eighth. So what we really need to plug in there is negative z minus 1 cubed. And let's do that here. And then we'll see how everything will work out just great. So again, factor out of z minus 1 squared. Simplify. Now what we're going to get is 1 third minus z over 3 and do the integration. Again, we do this step where we say z minus 1 squared, it's 1 minus z squared. So this again just simplifies to 1 minus z cubed. Here's the antiderivative, 0 and 1. You do indeed get 1 twelfth. All right, thanks for watching.